The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Oh, what is that number? Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Welcome to Happy Friday. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at some of these markets that are poised to maybe do something a little different. By the way, uh, we're going to have our good friend Jim Twentyman um, on the show here at uh, half hour talking about some high-frequency trading and data and uh, all a few other things that we're looking at. But uh, I've had a request already to talk about the gold market, and we certainly want to talk about that because we've had some uh, very interesting things happen over the last couple of days in the gold. It appears that maybe this level that we hit in silver might be spot on. So we'll, we'll take a look at uh, what happens at this as we go through the day. But Friday, in an up week, you know, the market has a pretty good possibility of uh, going higher. I still believe, and I, I have to go back to the work of uh, Bill Meridian because he's been uh, so accurate, and I don't know what the exact date is, but here we are on the 14th of July. And if we take a look at this uh, chart that he sent us, you know, it's uh, in this zone, but holy moly guacamole, folks. Give me one second here, and we'll see here what we've got here. Get this up to see it. You'll be able to see this um, combination of all cycles that end in seven. And, of course, this is Friday. This means if it's not down next week, this is probably going to be wrong. And it could be wrong for all the way into August 14th. Maybe that's where we're going to have a, uh, uh, a rally all the way up into that. I don't believe that's going to happen. But, you know, with the Dow Jones making new highs and it uh, looks like the uh, S&P is going to make new highs today. And also possibly the NASDAQ is not very far away. So all that is is going to be very interesting to see if it fulfills, you know, what we're looking at. I, I wanted to talk a little bit um, about that gold market because it's it's. Ha oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put the DAX up for the day. Let's get this up first. I always want to do that to let you know what's happening across the pond. And you'll see over here. This is the um, the daily chart on the DAX. Uh, always looks uh, interesting. And then we also want to take a look at the um, at the. Uh, Hourly, give me one second here. Get this up, and then I just have to move this over a bit and just pull it down just a little bit so that I can pull it around, and then we'll be able to see it right here. Okay, there's what we have going on in the DAX on the hourly. That's you know another way of looking at it from a daily, looking at it a smaller time frame. But we did go up there and hit that. 61% retracement that we talked about yesterday. Now, yeah, you're right. You're right, Mark. The, the DAX is the ruler. That's the big daddy rabbit. Boy, that thing that thing moves uh, $20,000 like you blink an eye. It's, it's really, uh, really something quite spectacular. All right, let's take a quick look here at <clears throat> two things I wanted to do. First of all, I wanted to cover that gold. If you'll give me one second here, I want to get this gold up to show you where we are because uh, we've had this really nice movement here uh, from the bottom. We're up almost, uh, we haven't hit quite $34, $34 from, the, uh, from the low yet, but we're getting close. Um, let's just look at this here, where we are. Come on. Oh, dear, I just did the chart and put it in here. What did I do wrong? Well, I don't know what I did wrong, but I can't find it. I have it here somewhere, but I don't see where it is on my... Uh, uh, doggone it. Where is it? Oh, this is frustrating as heck. Doggone it. And I have to move on and not worry about it because I can't find it. I'll do it after, after we get into this and make sure we get it done a little bit here. Okay. Um, the uh, Anyway, we'll be looking here at these markets. By the way, we'll have a Jim Twentyman, as I mentioned, today. On Monday, we're going to have Cy Monley of Silvius Financial. Uh, he's the fellow who does a whole whole lot of uh, grain work. Uh, 
and in Chicago, his first job was with Rich Anderson. So he'll be on um, Monday, which will be, don't miss that show, because that'll be a very interesting one, because he's going to talk to us about how the fundamentals you know, line up with uh, some of the things that we we look at here on a technical basis. So those are, uh, that's a good one to be uh, be watching. Okay, now we want to try to. Where did that gold chart go? And it, it has to be here because I just I just just made it. Wow, it's hiding from me, and it's hiding very well. Well, don't worry too much about it. Okay, let's just get on to this next one here. Um, I wanted to go into the. Um, um, the Treasury bonds and Treasury notes a little better, uh, just to see where we are there. If you remember, uh, on the Treasury bonds and Treasury notes, we were looking for the market, you know, to uh, rally off of this last low that we just had the other day. And uh, what we'd like to do is to see if it's going to get to this 153.24 uh, uh, level. Now, I, we went down yesterday and made a 78% retracement of the low that we made at 51, you know, 22. The Treasury notes, folks, didn't even take out the previous day's low. They didn't even budge. That was telling you that it looked like it was going to be, uh, you know, a really nice spot to uh, take a look at, uh, you know, the, uh, the long side. But now uh, we want to see if the bonds are going to get up here to the 382 level at the 153.24. That's going to be really important because if we don't get any higher than that, that tells us that it's going to be a, you know, really uh, substantial move, um, you know, higher. In other words, it, let's just rephrase it. In other words, if the market stops at the 382 and then turns down, uh, that is extremely bearish to interest rates. Interest rates will go a lot higher. Bonds and notes will go a lot lower. But it's based on that 382 level. And if it doesn't hold that level, then uh, look out. It could be really dramatic. We won't know this probably, I believe, until probably Monday uh, or Tuesday, you know, at the, at the very latest. So we'll, we'll, keep an eye, we'll keep an eye on that. Okay, now if we want to take a look at, uh, I am really frustrated about this gold chart, folks. I just don't know. Oh, I just don't know where the darn thing is. If you'll give me a second here, uh, well, I can't find it. It's not. Uh, it's not here. Boy, this is frustrating. Boy, I tell you, when old. <laughs> All right, we'll see what. Let's get on to what we were talking about yesterday. Was the with the soybean market? I wanted to put this up here to talk to you about November beans a little bit, because we've had some really big moves here. Uh, in the last two days when the weather market broke. And uh, you'll notice that uh, we, we gapped above the 78% retracement. We took out the high of last November. And then, of course, the news came out. And you can see uh, from what happened, we've dropped, uh, you know, well over 50 cents a bushel. Once, when, once we went below the uh, 36 cent per bushel level, which was at 8, 10, 10, um, 10, 10, and I mentioned in there that anybody would be looking at, hold on one second, please. Anybody would be looking at um, the short side uh, of this market. I'm, I'm missed, just one second, folks. I've, I've, uh, lost, I've lost my total train of thought. After the beans made a new high, we had a break that took us down what we thought was going to stop at the first harmonic number of, of beans, which is 36 cents. I'll cover that when we get back. Uh, TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS 
has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 Okay, we're back, folks, and we're going to take a look now at that gold chart that I finally found. Uh, actually, I don't know what happened to it. I had it had it resent to myself. But if you'll take a look at this gold chart, and if you like 61% retracements, you can see over the last several days we've had several of these, and now we've taken out the highs of the previous day. If you remember yesterday, and I think also the day before, that if we can close above the 1234 level, we've got a possibility that uh, maybe gold has made a major bottom as well as silver. And the reason why we were saying that is if we take a look at the silver chart first, if you'll look at this chart on the long-term basis, you'll see here, this is actually a weekly chart, that the uh, ABCD structure measured right down to the bottom that we hit. Now, the this, this chart, I didn't update uh, from the week because we made the low at 1512. That was wh what the low was. That was the 1.618 number uh, coming off of last April. So uh, this is a really, really a possibility of, uh, you know, being a major bottom, you know, in the, uh, in the silver market. And then if we also took a look at the gold market, you can see, and uh, when, when I did this chart, this was uh, done at 1211 per ounce. And if you'll see this uh, chart in gold, uh, there's some cycles that are here that also tell us, um, you know, what we're looking at. And if you remembered, and I'm going to update all this uh, over the weekend for the newsletter folks, but we also had some real positive things uh, looking at in the um, uh, XAU. And I'll post this to take a look at this just to, to let you look at it because this is the gold and silver stocks. Uh, as you can see, the gold has been much stronger than the XAU all along from last March, well, actually all the way through February. And now you'll notice that uh, we we went down and we went down and tested this bottom three times now uh, in the XAU uh, down at the 77 level. And so far, it's held. That That's a very, very strong, uh, strong 
thing, and now we're starting to see gold turn up. We've already we've rallied about uh, twenty eight dollars a barrel, <laughs> about twenty eight dollars an ounce, in um, you know a matter of a few days. And if we can get above this, um, it's at, the area is around twelve thirty four to twelve thirty seven in the gold. That's going to tell us that there's a possibility this could be a a really good bottom. And then what we'd want to do is to watch for an ABCD structure you know, on the downside to find a low risk entry point. But all this doesn't mean very much until we get a little bit more strength in this to see if it's uh, going to do it. We've seen these false breakouts, you know, so many times that it's, uh, you know, it's truly, uh, it's just truly amazing to, to see how it all works out. Okay, now someone asked a question about the, uh, the IWM and whether it's a, it's a short, uh, here's where we were. Um, on Friday, uh, let's just put this up to let you take a look at it. And we're, we're trading now at the um, in the 141 and change level, I believe. So that makes that a 135 pattern. Uh, you, you know, if you sell it, your stop has got to be above 143. So you're not risking very much there. It's about a buck and a half. So that's a very, very low risk entry. You know, if that's the case, the news this morning, I guess, is all based on the bank stocks, which shouldn't be any surprise. But uh, we'll see if they're going to be, uh, if it's going to keep going. But anyway, that's what we're looking at uh, in the IWM. It does look like it uh, has a possibility. Remember, the New York Stock Exchange Index has not made a new high yet. It most probably will today, uh, given the strength of the early market. But um, the NASDAQ has not made new highs as of yet. And the banking index, uh, which will probably be affected a great deal by all the bank stocks today, has also uh, not made a new high. But again, that could all that could all change. The thing that I'm basing this on is the fact that you know build cycles are uh, spot on right in this area, and even the even the Bradley model could be off by a few days, and this would be the the ultimate of the few days. In other words, you come in here Monday, and if it's strong, you know this thing could go up all the way into August without any trouble. But when it does happen, oh boy, it's going to be it's going to be pretty nasty. The volatility index is still holding, uh, you know, above the old lows. Uh, again, because of the strength this morning, this all might change, you know, right after uh, what happens. But we'll we'll see what's going on. The key to watch today, folks, in my opinion, is to watch that bond market at the uh, 154.24 uh, level. We've been to 150. Let's try it again. 153.24 level. We've been to 153.18 so far today. So watch the level of 153.24. Uh, That's going to be one that looks uh, extremely interesting. Uh, you know, from the short side, just by looking at it. Um, regarding the crude oil, we've been up to the 78% level twice now at this 46-50 uh, level. Uh, that's telling us that uh, it still hasn't uh, got enough power to get it above this uh, 47 level, because if we can do that, then you've got a possibility of the market uh, you know, moving higher, but the the bias is still to the downside in the crude oil, folks. It's uh, it's had lower tops and lower bottoms, so this is not a, uh, it's not a bull market yet. There's no question about it. Oh, one other factor about the silver that I think is very important. This is a very long-term chart, uh, going back uh, 13 years, and we'll put this up here to let you take a look at it. You'll see the support that came in there in the silver at that level at the 115. Um, well, actually, the low was 115.12, I believe, and we'll find out if that's going to be uh, it's going to be the case or not. But we'll see what happens. We'll have Jim Twentyman on here uh, at the break for a little while. I, I, he's got some things he can talk to us about this algorithmic trading and stuff, and and how he handles data and how he. I'm going to ask him, you know, questions that I already know the answer to, but you might like him, and that's how he found these harmonic numbers and stuff, and and uh, his interest in astrology and things. I've known Jim for over 50 years. Uh, he was my broker back in 1966, so <laughs> that's a long time. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll see, uh, see what happens here when we have him on the line here. And uh, all righty, let's see what's the next thing we've got to do here. Well, we got a break coming up next, but uh, we want to watch. Uh, I think I have it right here. Let's get this... Uh, Treasury bonds as of yesterday, uh, 52. Oh, shucks. Yeah, hold on just a minute. I missed that one, too. Where are these charts disappearing to? This is not fair. 
I wonder what's happened if my program's changed. Hmm. Okay, let's get back to the, the real world here. Uh, get to this banking index I wanted to show you because with the news today, this thing really better get moving. Uh, I don't know uh, where all these bank stocks are this morning, but if we look at the banking index, I don't, uh, Mike. I don't look at the, um, I don't look at platinum very often, um, but I'll, I'll try to bring it up a little bit later because it's, um, yeah, you know, I haven't traded platinum in probably 15 years uh, would be my guess because I trade gold almost all the time. I don't trade silver that often, but uh, those are the, the main things that, uh, you know, that I'm watching. So we'll see if it's uh, going, yeah, that's right. The stars might not be lining up. That's for sure. Okay. We'll, we'll keep an eye. We had some monsoon rains here last night. I mean, we get these real heavy rains, one or two inches at a time uh, during the monsoon season that starts around July, uh, during July 15th during July and August and part of September that we rain almost every day. It keeps the temperature down, but we do get a little bit of humidity here, so we'll see. Uh, wow, that's amazing that these bank stocks are, uh, are lower. That's uh, hard to believe. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Jim Twentyman from uh, Morro Bay, California on the line. JT, are you there? 
Uh, yes, I'm here. Well, it's good talking to you. <laughs> Since we've been talking almost every day for 52 years. <laughs> well, not quite every day, but most of the days anyway. Anyway, listen, my friend, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of this uh, in these bad uh, automatic futures trading and stuff. And I posted that um, you know, showing you how investment, how you sent this chart along about investment flows. You want to talk a little bit about the uh, the high frequency trading? I know you have a lot to do with data and stuff. So, tell us what your feeling is on this. Well, I was when I uh, read that article, I was a little surprised it was uh, <clears throat> uh, as high as it was, and uh, the CFTC the. Uh, I, I was uh, surprised that they were able to get that kind of report uh, uh, delineating the percentages of all the different uh, groups, the uh, interest rates, the um, agricultures, and, uh, you know, so forth. And, and it looks like there's, uh, at this point, there's nothing below 50%. Everything is somewhere between 50 and uh, 90% algorithmic uh, trading uh, across the board. And then uh, that thing that I sent a few uh, a day or two ago, uh, J.P. Morgan, uh, they estimated that the, uh, I think the stock or the equity part of it was, is to be as close to 90%. Wow. I, rec I saw an article the other day that only 10% of the market is related to people that actually pick stocks anymore. You know, that used to be the big thing, but uh, that's all changed. Now, is this, is this one of the reasons why you think we see these exaggerated moves where they go straight up and then straight down in some of these things? Well, in the last uh, month or so, when, uh, uh, for instance, when coffee made its bottom, um, it was a sharp... Uh, down and then up in a two-day period. Uh, we had sugar uh, had been coming down uh, kind of in a bear pattern for months. And then uh, off the bottom, we had two really hard up days. And I think once the, uh, once the algos get a hold of it, there's, there's uh, their trend, their short-term trend following patterns, whatever – uh, the program is there's, there's just no looking back when uh, everybody's trying to get through the door at the same time. Well, that'll be true on the downside too if that ever happens for sure. But uh, I've just never trusted these ETFs, Jim. I don't know much about them, but when I realize that they're made up out of uh, thin air, it just really uh, it really troubles me. And I, of course, you know, Buffett says they're the weapons of mass destruction, but you know that remains to be seen. Uh, there was another topic that one of our listeners wanted to ask, and Jim, you know, you've uh, taught me about harmonic numbers way back in the days when we worked together at Drexel, and uh, you want to, you want to, can you remember how you came up with these harmonic numbers and and uh, why they're so important? Because, you know, we're seeing them show up all the time in many of these things. But do you remember back in those days? How you found it? I mean, it, I'm talking 40 years ago, so I hope the gray matter is still up there. But <laughs> <laughs> well, some of, some of the uh, original numbers that I use, uh, I mean, this is going back to pork bellies, which is uh, we don't trade anymore. But um, for instance, I thought that four cents, and I remember this quite well. I thought four cents was a was a harmonic uh, uh, pattern, and it worked. Uh, reasonably well, and, and looking back over history, uh, I didn't have the right number at the time, and uh, uh, I, I slowly. Uh, sorry about my alerts here. Uh, That's okay. Over time, I had uh, refined that, and I kept refining it, and you know, I would come up with numbers, and and then it would be, you know, some of it would go to harmonics, like based on the the circular circumference of 360, and then I kept refining that, and uh, eventually I got to numbers. Oh, it seems like every year or two I have a little bit of a breakthrough, and, uh, you know, I discover a, a nuance that's better than what I've been using. Mm -hmm. 
um, it, it just, uh, you know, I don't know if I'll ever get to the, really the bottom, bottom number that you're looking at. It's sort of, sort of like the same thing that they did in uh, chemistry. Uh, when we were getting through high school, you only had three things that you thought were in an atom, uh, mm-hmm. like, you know, um, electrons, neutrons, and protons. And then uh, as time went on, they discovered uh, quarks, which is, uh, I, I, I don't know what the number is, but they discovered several, uh, I think a couple hundred variations of things floating around inside atoms. Uh, mm-hmm. And I've kind of gone through the same discovery over a long period of time of uh, uh, finding new new uh, variations uh, that that work. Yeah, I see that too. Um, Jim, you remember um, years ago when uh, people, well, they, people know that you and I worked at Drexel together, but our offices were connected by a, we had a little window, didn't we, where we didn't have to use a phone. We could actually chat. Uh, and uh, Jimmy, you know, I of all the years we've been doing this stuff, those days at Drexel have to be so, so special, you know, because we had so much fun and it was so easy. But uh, it, it was really spectacular. I think of it almost every day. <laughs> but we sure had a lot of fun there together. That That's for sure. The movie stars that would come into the office and stuff. Uh, it was and not all the nice people that we met and it was still in contact with some of them. Jim, I have a question from one of our listeners uh, about the grain markets. What's your feeling? here on this reversal that we've had this week in grains? Uh, it, it, it looks to me like if you were just to kind of take a uh, uh, basic uh, uh, Elliott approach, you're probably going to have one more shot at the high that they made last week. Uh, you know, Now, whether you take it out or not will be, you know, that's still based on rain. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, if, if 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 the rain is not as uh, robust as as uh, what changed uh, made the top here, uh, then you'll you'll certainly go to new highs. But uh, if the rains kind of uh, keep the crop from getting deteriorating anymore, you you probably only will challenge the highs and. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, then you know the thing that I love to look for is the uh, October, the first week in October, that uh, seasonal low that uh, mm-hmm. just about always you can always touch your watch for that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, corn came all the way down to the seventy-eight percent retracement yesterday. Hey, listen, buddy, we're uh, finishing up our segment here. I want to thank you for joining us today, and uh, hopefully we'll get to talk again soon on the air. Okay. My pleasure. Okay, thanks a lot. Jim Twentyman from Morro Bay, California, 877-927-6648. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. 
Tuesdays and Thursdays. We broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, we're back and uh, we're going to be taking a look here uh, at the wheat market. I just wanted to bring this to your attention because uh, this is one of this is the reason for the Gartley pattern here uh, in the wheat. If you'll take a look at this chart, you'll notice this is a hourly chart going back uh, into um, the 26th of June when the market first started to move up. Uh, we've now made an ABCD pattern to the downside. Uh, you'll notice the two markings on the one in the red box and the one in the dark blue letters. The last swing down from July 7th to the 10th was a 1.618 expansion. Uh, it's also at a 61% retracement coming off of the bottom. And this is the first ABCD move in a new bull market. And Gartley said that was the time to look for an entry. So if you're interested in buying wheat, it's much better to buy it at 541 than it is to buy it at 591 by a long stretch of the imagination. So this is where we might get a rally going uh, in the uh, wheat market. The weather market has been broken, but that doesn't mean that it can't come back, folks. We've seen this. Uh, we've seen this happen over and over again through the years. Uh, that this does happen. So you've got to be, you know, very, very aware that when the rain stops, uh, it can really move uh, the markets a great deal. Now, the next one we want to take a look at because it stopped at a very important point yesterday. Yesterday, and that was the uh, the corn market. You notice the corn made a new high up there at uh, 417, and we dropped uh, 35 cents uh, a bushel down to the um, 383 level. That was the 78 percent retracement. We've since rallied about six cents from that level. Now, what I would do for my strategy, because I believe in the full moons and new moons, I would like to see a little bit of time go by because we've got our next uh, new moon is going to be coming in here on the uh, 23rd of July. So that would be the next time that I would be watching. And remember, folks, the growing season that really counts for the soybeans is the month of August. That's when they do the pollination, uh, when they, they try to get three pods, three, three little beans to the pod. And if the crop is really bad, sometimes they only get two uh, pods, uh, two little bean pods, and they crush the pod into uh, oil and meal. Oil is about 75% and uh, oil is about 20% and the rest of it is, um, is uh, residual. And they use residual also. They use it in uh, dog food and a bunch of other things. And also for uh, um, planting uh, fertilizer. So we'll watch those things as we, as we go through here uh, coming up this next week. But the weather market for the right now has been broken. And the $64 question is, is, is it going to come back? And believe me, if it comes back in August with hot temperatures, we could see these beans going to new highs. 
uh, much like what Jim Twentyman mentioned a little while ago. So uh, the, my, my situation in the beans is that we went below that um, 1010 yesterday. I was risking only six cents in that. Uh, it started to work relatively well, and then, of course, uh, uh, news of more rain came, and then the market broke another 25 cents uh, to the downside. And uh, so they just stand aside until we get to a, another area that we might want to be looking at. Now, in the last segment, we had a question about the platinum, and I wanted to bring up uh, the chart of platinum to let you see what this, folks, uh, looks like in platinum. You'll notice that... Um, uh, platinum did not make a new low on the move down, much like silver did. Uh, gold did not make a new low either because it's a much higher price. But uh, it didn't. It hasn't rallied very much, folks. I mean, it's gone virtually nowhere. And uh, so I don't know if this is uh, indicative of anything in a bull market or not. But what's truly amazing to me is that we've got platinum at 909 and, and gold at 1214. Folks, when I started trading gold, you know, many, many years ago, back in the 70s, you know, platinum was the precious metal uh, that was always at, at least two or three hundred dollars, sometimes even more, uh, four hundred dollars premium. Uh, to the gold. That's not the case anymore. And you, you, I don't know if this is relates to catalytic converters or whatever it is, but uh, there's a big change between gold and platinum uh, over the past years. And that in itself is a, is a big thing, you know, to keep in mind as we, uh, as we look at some of these things. Um, let's just take a quick look here where we are in the stock market. I want to put this, uh, this up again here because I believe this is where the problem arises. Let me just put this up here. And that is, uh, this is this red line is the Bradley inverted model. And I use that because the market was going up. Well, it's still going up. And we were looking for a, bot a, a Bradley date on the 8th to the 9th. Here we are out in the 14th. And we're going to make another new high today uh, in the Dow at 21,500 and something. It's going to be up 150 so far for the week. All that was done in one day. But uh, we'll watch it uh, closely. But I think you just wait until Monday, you know, to see what happens with uh, some of these things. But, you know, the banking stock should have been moving this market higher. And you've got Goldman Sachs down, Citibank, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo. All of them are down 1% or 2%. And uh, that's it. The question that uh, Shannon is asking, how do I determine when to invert the Bradley? Well, the only thing I can do is uh, is when it starts to move away from the, the point of reference, which at this time would have been July 9th, 10th. That was the full moon. That would have been Monday. But we've been up every day this week. And, and believe me, like Jim Twentyman just mentioned, because of these ETFs that are out there, once these momentum start, maybe they could move it over a few days. I don't know. I, I really don't know the answer to that. The person that is really good about inverted Bradley is uh, our good friend Norm Winsky down in uh, Astro Trend down in Florida. And I'll have him on the show on the 20th, and we'll ask him, you know, what is going to be. Um, we'll see. Uh, Jim, uh, uh, no, Jim, uh, uh, the question someone's asking about, Jim, Jim and I, uh, w when Drexel hired me as the commodity uh, manager there, they asked me to get some brokers in after the first year because I got so darn busy. And the first person I asked to come to work uh, for me was uh, Jim Twentyman. He was at Commodity, uh, Co uh, commodity Corp. Ah, he was at uh, uh, Com uh, Conti Commodities, and so he had to move down the street a little ways, about a mile and a half, and he came to work for me there. Then I got uh, Ernie in, and then I had one other broker. There were four of us there uh, that ran the whole operation. It was, you know, really like a like a hedge fund is what it was for the firm. But uh, Jim only did commodities. I'm registered in five different aspects of uh, the business, but uh, only only the commodity department is what we did. We didn't do that. I, you know, that, that's just. Uh, and believe me, there were there was only a few customers, maybe a handful, maybe ten, that actually put their own orders in. Everything else was put in as a batch order we did everything as a as a group in other words if i bought gold i bought 400 contracts of gold and it was spread out over you know 150 or 200 uh, uh, 
<laughs> people. <laughs> I can't even think of the word. Okay, but anyway, that's how it worked. And then, you know, we did this for a long time and it worked great. But, you know, we were long gold and silver when it was going straight up. That would be like buying stocks, you know, five, six, ten years ago, well, back in 09. And you think you're a genius, but actually you're just following a trend that you have no control over. But that's the main thing. But that inverted Bradley model is a tough thing to figure out, folks. It really is. Uh, especially when you're at a real critical level. Uh, in 2009, it was not that not that critical because it was spot on that day. That was March the uh, 5th of uh, 2009. We'll be right back, 877-927-6648. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to... Um, Remind us, you know, where we were here last week with this uh, Japanese yen, uh, ABCD Gartley that we were looking at. And I want to show you the um, shorter term version first. This is the uh, hourly chart because we've had a pretty good break here now uh, in this uh, Japanese yen. We've gone from this 114.50 uh, level down to uh, below the 112.50. That's two handles uh, in just a matter of, uh, you know, four trading days. So that Gartley, you know, worked out, uh, you know, just 
spot on. They don't always work, but you know they have a better, higher probability of working because you have so many factors, you know, that allow you to uh, see where you are. Now, if you look at this on the longer term basis that we did last week, uh, and the importance of this was twofold. One was the fact that we took out those highs of May and didn't go anywhere, and we were setting right at the 61% retracement within 10 pips of that. So there were actually no stops uh, up in that area, and that, that tells you a great deal, folks, because if there's uh, no buying in there, the only thing that's left is selling. And as as you can see here, we've had a really strong down week so far. It's going to be one of the worst weeks we've had uh, in quite a while, being down two handles. So that tells us that we could be looking at uh, you know much uh, lower prices here in the yen dollar. But we'll we'll watch it as we as we go through. Remember, the Gartley patterns have a probability of around 65%. Uh, those are the ones that, you know, basically line up perfectly. But, you know, remember, if you go beyond the 78 percent level uh, in the Gartley pattern, that's not a good sign. That usually means you're going to be going to the 1.27, you know, or the 1.618. So those are just some of the things that we're, we're keeping in mind as we as we do these Gartley patterns. It's all probability based, folks. It has nothing to do with anything other than probabilities. There's no fundamentals involved or anything like that. Just keep in mind that it's it's a technical picture and that's what you want to be watching. So keep an eye on it. Watch the Treasury bonds, folks, at this 153.24 level. Uh, that should be a major high. 877-927-6648. trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations there's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity he'll give you the entry price price target and stock price of each stock and option trade with Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.